from time to time, different fragrance lines will evolve. And there's certain fragrances and scent profiles that at some point, it's just time to pass on them. Whether you're coming into the hobby and you hear all these wonderful things about certain fragrances and they may have had their heyday or they may be timeless in certain instances. But sometimes you just need to pass on certain fragrances for the new year. And for 2022, I've gathered up 10 that I think this year, if you're just now getting into the hobby or you're looking to buy some of these fragrances for the first time, my personal opinion, it's time to pass on these. So stay tuned. Quick disclaimer, so I do own all of these. I do wear all of these on occasion. And just because I'm saying moving forward, probably best to pass on them, doesn't mean I won't wear them in the future because they are good for different things in their own right. But I'm saying if I was buying them newly in 2022, I would pass on them. So let's get into it. Starting with one that I personally love, I still wear on occasion. I've worn a few times recently, but the fragrance line has evolved so much that I think it's time to pass on Aqua de Joe in 2022. And here's why, because I know this will be upsetting for some. Some of these picks are gonna upset some. That's just the name of the game. While a great fragrance, a timeless classic that in my personal opinion will never truly get old, the line has evolved so much that I truly believe every single flanker, literally all of them, are better than the original. My opinion, of course, and especially with the Eau de Parfum flanker of this on the horizon, I have yet to try it myself. I will get it at some point in this year of 2022. I'm confident that I'll like it better than this because Profondo Lights, Profondo, Profumo, Absolute, Absolute Instinct, I like all of them better. In their own right, they share some of the original's DNA. They all perform better, and they all smell a bit newer, and more modern. Some of them, in a lot of instances, have a lot more character and work better in multiple situations where this is just extremely fresh and ideal for warmer weather. And like I said, while still an all-time great that'll never get old, I just believe moving forward in 2022, if you're looking to rebuy it, or buy it for the first time, I think you should look at the rest of the line first because I truly believe the rest of the line has so much more to offer than the original. In 2022, I'm putting it out there. It's time to pass on Aqua de Jo. Another one that has an extremely successful fragrance line that I truly believe most of the flankers, I'm not gonna say all, but most, especially the newest Eau de Parfum flanker. I haven't tried red, that is the newest flanker, but the Eau de Parfum flanker is night and day better than this in my opinion, that being the original Mont Blanc Legend. Another one, like I said, I wear these fragrances pretty often. I wore this one recently, and it's another one that's kind of a modern classic in a way. It's another take on Abercrombie & Fitch Fierce, which is a early 2000s megastar for a lot of guys from my age group that were in high school around the heyday of Fierce, which Fierce still has its share of popularity and avid users to this day. But on a budget, this smells very similar and actually performs a little bit better in most cases. That's what made this so much popular. You can get 100 milliliter bottles for around 30 bucks for years now from discounters. And honestly, Legend Spirit, while not smelling the same, became immensely popular as a great cheap alternative for the discontinued 2016 Invictus Aqua. That shot up to mega popularity. And then for me, the Night Flanker is very good and underrated. I know a lot of you watching this will probably agree if you have it. And the Intense was a stud that unfortunately didn't stay around. Much, much better fragrance than buying this. And the EDP, in my opinion, is the shining star of the entire line. Like I said, the newest flanker that has released at the recording of this video is the red flanker in the red bottle. I have not tried it. I have a feeling I'm going to enjoy it because I've yet to try one from the line that I didn't think was at least a good fragrance. But the EDP is the highlight and that's where 
I say pass on this one in 2022. If you're looking to get this scent profile, I think get the best version of it with the best performance, the most rich and inviting, and much more appropriate for the cooler weather and evenings as well as the daytime versus this one. Go with Legend EDP. In 2022, I think it's time to pass on Mont Blanc Legend. This one may shock some of my regular viewers because I wear this one pretty often. I love the line, that being Dior Sauvage. The Eau de Toilette. Now, the most popular fragrance for men in the world besides Aqua de Joe, why would I say it's time to pass on it? Especially with me enjoying it so much. Well, that's because I truly believe every single fl flanker in the line is a better fragrance than the Eau de Toilette. Honestly, I think the EDP is the most well-rounded. I think the Parfum has much more cooler weather and slightly higher quality matured appeal to it. And the Elixir, I think, is a bona fide superstar stud if you're looking for a powerhouse that just has loads of spice and character. Yeah, this is super fresh. Yes, it's crazy mass appealing. It gets compliments. It performs. It checks all the boxes. That's why it's immensely popular. But the rest of the line, minus the Cool Spray, the Cool Spray I would lump in with this one because they're so similar. It's just a fresher version of this, which this is very fresh, but the Cool Spray is just a lightly fresher take on the EDT, basically. I think the rest of the line, the higher concentrations, are better fragrances as a whole. And there's so many people wearing this at this stage. I mean, for years now, there's so many people wearing Sauvage EDT that to still get what makes Sauvage special in the first place and separate yourself just a little bit, I think just stair step into the concentrations and see which one's for you. If you're looking to rebuy this because your bottle's low or you're looking to get it for the first time and you care about my advice, I say pass on this for 2022 and get any of the other flankers outside of the cool spray. Step into something with a little more spice, maybe a little bit more sweetness, something with more character. It'll be a much greater appeal. Trust me on that one. Try it, get a sample, but in 2022, it's time. Pass on Sauvage EDT. If there's one thing last year's release taught us, it's that you don't need this fragrance anymore. One of the most popular date night designer fragrances of all time, La Nuit de Lhomme from Yves Saint Laurent. So the Blue Electric Flanker came out this past year and it's basically a more lavender heavy version of this with better performance. It doesn't have the toned back density that this bottle does have. You can see this is the lighter color juice. This is not a vintage bottle. This is a 2018 bottle, uh, which is one of the newer formulas. It still smells great. It still performs average to slightly above average for me, but the better, more well-rounded and full scent profile is Blue Electrique. Seek out a bottle of Blue Electrique in 2022. Pass on La Nuit de Lhomme, the original. And honestly, I like all of its flankers that smell similar to it even more. The Eau de Parfum flanker, extremely underrated, more leather forward and rich and robust. The Le Parfum, bit more aromatic, less sweet, a little bit warmer spice without the powder my favorite in the line. And then there's the Lintense that's very floral and super underrated, very, very seductive fragrance, has violet and iris in it, super underrated. In 2022, it's time. Look, it had its heyday, it had its mega popularity. There's so many better options in its own line. Like I said, Le Parfum, Lintense, Eau de Parfum, and Blue Electrique, in my opinion, are all better buys at this stage. So in 2022, grab one of those instead of grabbing La Nuit de Lhomme. This might be an obvious choice for you guys because there's more ways to smell like this fragrance than any other, I think. That being Creed Aventus. You know, it's, there's so many great small clone house versions, Middle Eastern clone house versions, designer versions, other luxury niche houses, versions. It's outrageous how many different ways this scent profile has been exactly copied, twisted and tweaked, slightly resembles. Yeah, that's kind of the route they were going. There's so many different ways 
to go about this DNA for so many different fragrances out there that it literally, you just can't justify the price point anymore. Is it great? Yeah, it'll never not be great in my opinion. This was a monumental groundbreaking fragrance for men and for the fragrance industry as a whole. This got massive popularity from a luxury niche house. That doesn't happen as rapidly as or as easily for a luxury niche house as it does for designer brands. Usually those can get scaled up a lot easier in popularity if it catches on. They'll put a celebrity behind it for the marketing or you know, just the fact that it's, you know, girls' reactions for guys when they wear it, whatever the case may be, and the price point is dialed back much greater than buying a Creed fragrance. So to get the kind of popularity this had from 2010 to now, for the price point especially, is crazy. I don't know if it'll ever happen again the way it happened for this. So I respect it for that, but there's $20 and $30 fragrances that in the air, the average person won't be able to tell the difference and most likely you won't care either because you're going to smell great. I really think it's time, you know. If you have your bottles, rock them. Hey, I wear it from time to time. This is a 19S11 batch for those of you that may ask in the comments. I enjoy it. Love it. Great fragrance. But I wear it so much less than all the other fragrances I have that smell like it, including niche fragrances from Bond Number no. 9 and stuff like that, um, Spirit of Kings, that I actually enjoy more. I feel like the scent profile fits my taste better than actual Creed Aventus. So in 2022, save your money and go with one of the thousands of other options to smell like this. I think this goes for all three concentrations, even though I haven't tried the Parfum yet. I will try it at some point. But the Eau de Toilette and, of course, the one I have, the EDP of Versace Eros. There's an, this is another one that so many people smell like. I even smell this one on occasion at the gym that I go to, which, I mean, when they walk by, I'll smell them for a few seconds when they're after they're 10, 15 feet away. It's a powerhouse. It's as advertised, and it does smell great. I do have a ton of more affordable fragrances that, you know, make their version of this scent profile, and that's part of the reason I think it's time to pass on Eros for 2022. Prime example would be Guest 1981 Los Angeles, a cheap affordable fragrance that is very synonymous with my channel that I think smells great. It's a warmer, spicier take on this DNA, but very, very similar. English Laundry's Oxford Blue, a great take on the DNA with some added iris. It's a bit more floral with a touch of powder. It's a more well-rounded version, honestly. Doesn't perform as well, but I think it smells a little bit better, to be completely honest with you. Am I gonna stop wearing this? No. As I stated in the disclaimer, I'm not saying I'm gonna, don't wear it if you, if you have it. Wear your fragrances if you enjoy them. Enjoy the hell out of them. I'm saying, if you're looking to grab it this year, I would say go for the newest concentration first. Sample that one first because it's going to be the most modern take on the DNA from the brand themselves. I would say give that a chance first. I'm going to do the same. But as far as the EDT and the EDP, especially the EDT, there's so many ways to smell like this DNA for an even better price point. This isn't the most expensive fragrance in the world from discounters. Don't get me wrong. But for around 20 bucks, you can smell those almost identical with similar performance. So I say in 2022, Get one of those tweaks and twists on the DNA that makes it a little bit different so you're not smelling like everybody else that's wearing arrows because it's imme immensely popular on the level of a Dior Sauvage and a Creed Aventus, for example. The scent profile's everywhere. Save yourself some money and pass on Versace Eros in 2022. There's another one that pains me because I really enjoy this one, but the flankers have gotten so good. It's, it's just not justifiable in 2022. Stronger with you. Move on from it. If you're looking to buy this for the first time in 2022, check out all of the flankers. All of the flankers. They all have something different to offer. They all share this gorgeous, warm, spicy, slightly sweet, dry chestnut DNA that this scent is known for. It's a cuddly, attractive, seductive, sexy, and alluring scent. I know that was a lot of descriptive words, but it's all of that. Performance is great, but the whole line is so good they overshadow the original. And if your bottle's to the end, use up the rest of it. And if you're looking to rebuy the DNA, 
look at one of the many flankers. I haven't tried it yet from what I understand, absolutely is the best of the line. I've had so many people who I trust their opinion tell me that, that it's probably true. And I will get a bottle sooner than later. I've yet to grab it, unfortunately. But it, like I said, the flankers are so good, it gets overshadowed. If you still have your bottle, by all means rock it, just as I will. But if you're looking to get the Stronger With You DNA, hell, even Azaro The Most Wanted, I would recommend over getting this because it shares some of this scent with the Wanted DNA, and it's a gorgeous, gorgeous smell. And you can get it for about the same price from discounters. And in my opinion, it's a better fragrance. So 2022, grab the rest of the line or Azaro The Most Wanted and pass on the original Stronger With You. It's an all-time classic fresh fragrance. It never gets old. It's been replicated heavy, but we've gotten to the point to where the flankers have outshined it heavily. I'm talking about the original Azaro Chrome. So Chrome Extreme, I would recommend over this 10 out of 10 times, okay? It does smell like an extreme, an extreme version of Chrome mixed with some Aqua de Gio Profondo kind of a little bit of that scent profile going on too. Performance is lights out. And then on top of that, we're in lieu of the new Eau de Parfum flanker coming out at the recording of this. I'm not sure if it's officially out. I've seen the advertising from Azaro, so I would think it is officially released. I just haven't tried it yet and I am excited. And at the recording of this, I don't have it, but I will have it sooner rather than later because I'm quite excited about that. But it's a 90s, 90s darling. It smells of the 90s. It reminds me of the 90s. It's affordable. It still performs well for a freshie. It was unique for its time. It's a groundbreaking fragrance. But like I said, the flankers have overshadowed it. Overshadowed it. I would absolutely recommend Chrome Extreme over Chrome 10 out of 10 times. And I have a feeling when I get my hands on the Eau de Parfum, it'll be the same result. So in 2022, pains me to say it, it's time to pass on Azaro Chrome. Another one whose line has overshadowed the original, and it was immensely popular for years, still a very, very popular fragrance, but they've twisted and tweaked the DNA to where the flankers have become their own fragrances, and I would recommend so many other fresh, soapy fragrances over Prada Luna Rosa. It doesn't perform like it used to. It's a slightly below average to average at best type of performance, which I know is very important to a lot of you out there though i don't mind respraying there's some people that they just want to spray before they leave their home they're going to be gone most of the day they don't want to take anything with them and i totally understand where you're coming from with that if you're one that feels that way and here you would have to respray the extreme long discontinued was a better version sadly it's discontinued hard to find pops up here and there people gobble them up as soon as they can get their hands on them when they stock somewhere but Prada Luna Rosa Ocean, the newest release, is a sweet aquatic darling. It really is. It was a very good release. Not a great release, but a very good release in the line. Prada Luna Rosa Sport offers a more refined character on a similar scent profile to Jean-Paul Gaultier's La Malle. Prada Luna Rosa Carbon offers a more well-rounded and smooth take on this lovely fragrance right here that's featured in this video, Dior Sauvage. Its line is really, really good. but simplistic for what it is this is a very aromatic lavender heavy slightly it's kind of like a slightly spicy bar of soap is how i've described it in the past there's so many great soapy fragrances out there hell even from prada i would recommend the loam line over this there's just i can't justify recommending this in 2022 with so many other fresh bright smooth lavender scents out there on the market that kind of do it a little better than Prada Luna Rosa these days. I would honestly recommend the rest of their line because the lavender is the most prominent thing in the Luna Rosa line and it's featured pretty heavily in every one of its flankers. It's just a different take on that same smooth, soapy lavender that this fragrance is known for. So in 2022, I say pass on Prada Luna Rosa. Last but not least, this fragrance all of its flankers are better, in my opinion, even the cologne flanker that's not that popular, and I'm one of the few in the proud that enjoy it. But I have to say with one million, its flankers have been getting discontinued left and right. You know, Privé, which I think was the best of the line, got discontinued. I've heard Lucky, 
could potentially be on its way out. I'm, I'm not here to verify anything. Lucky is a better fragrance than this. I love the Cologne Flanker. That's the one I was saying people don't like. I thought the Parfum was a very good release, had some different a different approach to it. And the Elixir is now out, which I've yet to try, but I've heard wonderful things about. This is so not outdated, but old at this point. It doesn't perform like it used to. They've reformulated it a few times. They've eliminated better flankers than this fragrance, but still kept this around. The intense, the intense, uh, the, the intense and the gold got discontinued long ago. They were better fragrances than this. If Lucky's gone, that's sad. That's a better fragrance than this. And Privé is definitely a better fragrance than this. So, I mean, as a whole, the line has been better. Then the original. The original had its heyday, and it's it's still a good scent. I'm not saying don't enjoy your one million if you have one million. What I'm saying is if you were looking to get it this year, look elsewhere. There's so many better designer suite fragrances in the forty to sixty dollar price point, which is where this would fall, that you can find these days. Hell, Prada Luna Rosa Oceans, like I was just talking about in the previous selection of this video, I would recommend over this. That's a sweet aquatic, has similar sweetness with, it's kind of like crossing this a little bit with Prada Luna Rosa, really. There's so many better options that I think in 2022, it's time to leave this once, it seemed like it would be timeless, club banger, sweet, spicy, bubblegummy cinnamon scent. Still smells good. Don't get me wrong. Like I said, if you got it and you like it, rock it. But if you're looking to purchase in 2022, look elsewhere. There's so many better sweet designer fragrances at this point. I say pass on 1 million. Interesting video topic, I know. Some of these, very close to my heart. I do wear them pretty often. Some of these I wear sporadically. Some of these I don't wear as much as I used to. And some of these may be some of your favorite fragrances. That's why I had to put the disclaimer. This is all my opinion, of course. Take it with a grain of salt. You could say, ah, screw it. I'm buying that 20 this year in 2022. It's just my opinion. It's just a nice topic for discussion. And honestly, I think there's so many better options for each of the 10 that we discussed here in this video today that I say, if you're looking to buy them for the first time or rebuy, pass in 2022. And until next time, do me a real quick favor. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe. So I do appreciate all the feedback and I love hearing from you guys. What in this video do you completely agree with me? What in this video do you disagree with me on? It's an opinion. Everybody's got one and yours may differ from mine and that's totally fine. And yours may be right in line with what I'm thinking. I'd love to read those comments. Until next time, I will say, if you get your hands on any of these 10 and you give them a spray now, you might thank me later. But if you decide to pass on them and go one of the other routes that we discussed in this video, then you really might thank me later. Have a good one, guys.